It's not just you. Everyone seems to be cold plunging or watching other people do it. <laughs> We're going to have cold plunger Josh Cameron film the process. This is what is happening in his body. First, the cold shock, where the cold might just take our breath away. As soon as you step into the water, you will activate your hyperventilation. And that is because you are not adapted yet. His body goes into fight or flight mode from the cold shock. Every cell in your body is going to be affected by this stressor, which is very potent for you. Microstress might feel painful in the moment, but it has long-term benefits. That will help your overall health by increasing your metabolism, and it will help on your muscles, on your fat storage, and it will help on your mental balance. The skin sends signals to the brain once the body starts to get cold. The temperature regulating center sends that, wow, this is an emergency. It will immediately increase noradrenaline in the body to activate our fight and flight system. We will have a huge increase by 2.5 fold of noradrenaline within a few minutes. Noradrenaline acts on what's called brown fat a type of fat tissue that keeps you warm by breaking down glucose and fat molecules in the body. It not only activates the brown fat, it also makes sure that our blood vessels contract to our arms and legs so we can keep the warm blood in the center of our body because that's going to save our vital organs. Activating this brown fat has long-term benefits. Scientists saw that if you can increase your metabolism by activating the brown fat, this could actually be a way to prevent lifestyle diseases such as type 2 diabetes. The longer time you stay in the water, the more heat you lose and then you will have an activation of the muscles. And the first muscles that start to shiver, they're located in your chest and legs. Pectoralis major, which is the breast muscle, and also the femoralis, which is the big muscle on your thigh. And when you feel the muscles are shivering, it's time to actually get up. You have ripped all the benefits that you need. The more times you cold plunge, the more benefits the body gets. This includes an increase in dopamine. This dopamine increase from cold immersion is just as high as nicotine or cocaine. Let's go, baby! So this is definitely the most natural high you could get. Dopamine gives you drive and motivation. You will have an increase of 2.5 fold above baseline of dopamine. That's not going to subside just immediately as soon as you go up. That will last for hours afterwards an increase in serotonin. So after three times, after four times, you also activate your vagus tone. That would give you a sense of mental balance because it increases serotonin in the brain. That is not something you get from cold showers, for example. You get that from submerging into cold water. And an increase in oxytocin. We have seen that from mice studies, they have an increase in oxytocin. And oxytocin is our love drug, natural drug in our brain that is increased every time we fall in love or we have sex or we eat chocolate, touch and stuff like that. You don't necessarily need to dunk your entire body into cold water to reap the benefits. I found this very interesting study from Canada from a scientist group. They had calculated how much heat you lose submerging your body into cold water up to the neck versus how much heat you lose from also dunking your head. Submerging up to the neck, you would lose 11% of heat from the head. But if you also then do a head dunk, you will increase that heat loss by 36%. In fact, dunking your hands can be just as beneficial. I found this very interesting study in a fisherman. They work in very cold water with their hands submerged many hours. Scientists found they were cold adapted. So the cold adaptation doesn't just come from exposing your full body up to the neck. You can also expose parts of your body and you will get a systemic effect. Finally, the after drop you will actually be colder when you get up. All your muscles will start to shiver because when you're in the water, your body is completely trying to shut out the cold. But when you get up, the blood vessels will dilate and the warm blood from your core will float out to your fingers and your cold tissue and your muscles. In your core, you have receptors which will send then a signal to the brain telling you, oh, now the blood has become 
much colder. That is a decrease in temperature in your core and your muscles would then start to shiver even more because now you got colder. That is completely normal and just keep moving afterwards. Just don't sit on your couch. This principle is called the Zurich Principle and it's named by a professor from Stanford University. Cold plunging is a practice with a long history with the Egyptians. These first civilizations, they built the seas and the rivers and thermal sources around them. In Egyptian times, the water was used for hygienic and clinical purposes. And with the Greeks. Hippocrates said that because of the imbalances that we have, the fluids in the body can get stuck and that imbalance can be restored going into cold water and warm water. But researching what happens in the body and the potential benefits of the cold is recent. The Titanic actually sunk in April the 15th in 1912, and there was a big disaster. But this is in history the first time we really know how much time the body can be in cold water before it gets hypothermic. From that on, people were thinking, well, cold water could actually be really dangerous. It didn't really get any better when we jump right on to World War II, where Nazi experiments were performed in the concentration camps in Dachau to investigate how long a human body could be cooled before they die. It has taken decades before scientists started again investigating human physiology in cold water. In the 60s and 70s, we begin again to see studies where we can see what happens when you put people into cold water. Cold plunging weekly can have many long-term benefits. Another long-term benefits of going into the cold water is the increase in metabolism. Just by 11 minutes per week, divided on two to three days, you will have an increase in thermogenesis in the body. So you will get warmer, you will get an increased insulin sensitivity, and you will have a better glucose balance, meaning that you will easier get rid of the glucose in your bloodstream when you uh, are adapted to cold water. The same study by Dr. Soberg and her colleagues suggests adding warmth. We also saw that going into a sauna 57 minutes divided on two to three days, 10 to 15 minutes at a time, you can also increase your metabolism and you will lower your core temperature, which is a good thing because then you have a higher threshold for getting hypothermic as well. The long-term benefits of cold plunging seems to be that you will have a better temperature regulation in your body. You will become a warmer person physically, apparently also emotionally. That could explain the culture that is also in the winter swimming clubs, that people get this gratitude because they have maybe this large increase in oxytocin. I think it explains why we see that kind of friendly atmosphere there. 